Hi everyone! As you have many times requested, this video is going to be for Maybelline's new Color Tattoo Pure Pigments. So this is another eye product in, that is being added to the Color Tattoo line, and these are loose powder pigments. You can find these at your local drugstore like CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, and also Ulta and they retail for about $7 each. As you can see, there are 10 colors currently in the line, and as always, you can go to allurebeauty.com to see photographs of all of the colors, to find out where to purchase them, and to eventually see reviews for each individual shade. If you haven't already, please make sure to hop on over to the Glossy Box video for June. I am giving away that special edition box to one YouTube viewer, so if you're interested in that, please go see the video for the rules to enter. Alright, let's move on to looking at each of these colors. So each pigment comes in a jar like this. It is a round plastic jar and it has a twist off top with initially a sealed inner part here. And once you take that seal off, you can see that there is a sifter inside that allows the product to come through. And usually you can remove the sifter part, but it's extremely difficult on these jars to remove this. So just be aware of that. I wasn't able to actually do it on this jar here. Here is Barely Brazen, Buff and Tough, Breaking Bronze, Improper Copper, Downtown Brown, Black Mystery, Wild Gold, Forest Fatale, Never Fade Jade, Brash Blue, Potent Purple, and Pink Rebel. I'm going to swatch the neutrals first and then the brighter colors. So first we have Barely Brazen, which is a nude champagne color. So it's going to be neutral and fairly subtle. I'm going to add more product. And this is, you know, picking up a fair amount of product. So it's a very subtle shade. And is most suitable probably as a highlight or lid color. Here is Buff and Tough, which is a deeper nude shade with gold shimmer particles. But again, it's sort of translucent. It's almost as if the pigment doesn't want to really stick to the skin. Here's a second layer of the product. Doesn't really improve that much though. Here's Breaking Bronze, which has a frost finish instead of a glittery finish. It's much smoother and stronger in pigmentation sort of a coppery color as opposed to a bronze. Here's Improper Copper, which is a warm toned brown with shimmer particles. Downtown Brown, which is a more minky brown color. And Black Mystery, which is a black color with blue shimmer particles. The black pigment is on the soft side. It's not really opaque. Here is Wild Gold, which is a very yellow toned gold color. It's much more yellow, I would say, than gold going to add a little more product to try to strengthen the finish, but it doesn't really work. It's still a little translucent on the surface. Here is Forest Fatale, which is sort of a silvery green. It's kind of a dusty green color with a more subtle frosty finish. Never Fade Jade is a bright, deep 
jade color. And this one is closer to a matte finish. It still has a sheen, but it doesn't have any frost or shimmer particles in it. Rash blue is a very bright ocean blue color. Again, like with Never Fade Jade, this does not have any shimmer particles or frost to it. Potent Purple is a light purple shade. It's weak in pigmentation. I will add a second layer to try to build it up. But again, it just seems like the pigment doesn't want to adhere to the skin, so as I drag or tap my brush, it just lifts up the powder instead of placing it down onto the skin. And Pink Rebel, which is this neon pink with a lilac undertone. It has almost a duochrome purpley flash to it, but once again, it's hard to get the powder to stick on the skin so that you can see that effect. Here's some more product layered on, but even tapping and short strokes doesn't seem to fix the problem. Okay, to see if we can improve the finishes on these colors, I'm going to apply them one more time, but this time with a damp brush. So here we have Barely Brazen, which improves in finish by a lot. It's much more frosty and you get that champagne color much clearer. Here is Buff and Tough, which I will need to pick up more product for. Here is a second layer of Buff and Tough. It still doesn't have the smooth finish that I would like, but you can at least see this brown color better. It does have larger chunks of glitter in it than any of the other colors. Here is Breaking Bronze. I would actually suggest keeping this to a dry application because it's already really pigmented and frosty. You don't need to apply it wet, and applying it wet makes it a little more streaky. Here's Improper Copper. Again, to get rid of the streaks caused by the addition of water, you can work in smaller patches. But again, I would keep the application for this color to a dry brush. Downtown Brown. Pigmentation does improve a little bit and has slightly stronger frosty finish to it. So this is a good candidate for using either dry or with a damp brush. And Black Mystery. Work in small strokes, but the blue um, sheen that this has is more noticeable when you apply it wet, but the underlying black color becomes streaky. So, you know, good and bad things either way that you apply it. Wild Gold. Again, a color that does not need to be applied wet and actually loses some of its intensity when you apply wet because it becomes streaky. Forest Fatale, definitely a color you should not apply with a damp brush. It loses its color and becomes really watery and can't even lay down the color there. Never Fade Jade, another color you should keep with a dry application. It becomes more like a watercolor once you introduce a damp brush. Brash Blue, same comments apply. It's not a shimmery shade or frosty shade, so it's more likely to not hold up as well under a damp brush. Potent Purple which actually does have good vibrancy, even when applied under a damp brush. I'm going to try to get a more even application. So once again, it has a more metallic sheen, but it just doesn't hold up very well under a damp brush. If you want to apply it wet, I would work in really small strokes. 
and Pink Rebel. So looks like that duochrome comes across much better. So I'm going to try to add a little more powder and see if we can get a nicer finish. Not great, but a little better than when you apply it dry. So there you have Maybelline's new Color Tattoo Pure Pigment Eyeshadows. So there are a set of these colors that really don't work well when applied dry, and that is mainly the first two colors, which were Barely Brazen and Buff and Tough. They were really weak in pigmentation and finish. They improved when being applied with a damp brush, especially Barely Brazen, the first one. Black Mystery also improved a little bit when applied wet as well as Pink Rebel and Potent Purple, although Pink Rebel didn't really improve that much. But if you're going to buy any of those colors, I would definitely say you should apply them with a damp brush instead of dry. And then on the other hand, there are a set of colors that are much better when applied dry than wet. And that's basically Wild Gold, Forest Fatale, Never Fade Jade, and Rash Blue. They're much better when applied dry. And then the shades that you should probably use dry because they're just better dry are Breaking Bronze and Improper Copper. And Downtown Brown I feel like is the only one that could go either way and works well under either situation. Make sure you check Allure Beauty if you'd like to see photographs and individualized reviews for how these eyeshadows perform when worn throughout the day. And go ahead and check out any of the other videos and giveaways that are currently going on. Alright, I hope you enjoyed looking at these new products with me. I'll see you in the next video.